you guys me from Team Tech Reviews back again another video. So in today's video, we're going to be talking about uh, the buyer's guide for iPhone 14 series. So the iPhone 14 obviously just came out and it's available today, all models, and there's a lot of back orders going on. And if you're able to get yours without a back order, or you plan on driving out to an Apple store to go get one, let me guide you real quick to a buyer's guide real quick. It'll be very brief, probably under five minutes, because it shouldn't be too hard to figure this out, uh, which model is best for you. All right, let's get into it. All right, so we're talking Pro models, right? So if you will have the 13 Pro and Pro Max, based on what I've seen from reviews, and like I said, I'm going to get it myself in October. It's going to be shipped in October. Then I'll make a video comparing the 13 Pro Max and 14 Pro Max. But I got to play with my mom's 14 Pro a little bit today, the 6.1 inch one. And honestly, I was intrigued by the Dynamic Island. And honestly, it just felt like an iPhone, right? Because it feels like... A dynamic island is an extra notification panel that you don't have to swipe down on but you still have to put your thumb all the way to the top of the screen so when i played with that 14 pro 6.1 inch didn't really feel like i had to reach for the dynamic island but i'm betting you on the max i'll have to do that because it's a significantly bigger phone but for the most part i was like wild by like oh cool dynamic island and then it just felt like a regular iPhone 13 Pro because the front facing camera was a lot sharper I liked it and the main camera looked cool I didn't play with it too much but at the end of the day it still feels like an iPhone and honestly I'm wondering if smartphones are just reaching their peak well at least iPhones because they're always the same with something a little different an incremental upgrade here and there that really adds up when you compare it to like the way older models but you look at manufacturers like Samsung, Foldables, uh, flip phones and then the 22 ultra and all that stuff innovation right other phones um having like these dynamic dynamic ginormous uh camera bumps with 108 megapixel sensors cool right innovation i guess but nonetheless the 14 pro felt like a regular iphone 13 pro max or a regular iphone 13 pro for for instance so i mean mm, let me so the pro models right so the pro models uh comparing it to the last year if you have the 13 pro and pro max it might feel like an in incremental upgrade we were all excited for the new design we all want the notch to go away trust me the notch was awful but if you really think about it the not the dynamic island is really the notch brought down into a pill shaped form so instead of a cutout from the top like someone was cutting someone's lineup and just did a little vegeta lineup on them uh, it basically is just the notch formed into a pill, moved down because it's still kind of wide. So Apple, instead of trying to hide it, really made it a big deal. They're like, oh, the dynamic island is something you can interact with. They made it part of the software and it's genius. Honestly, I thought Apple did a good job making it interactive with the software instead of just an ugly little pill thing on top of the phone. So they made it interactive, they made it useful, which is very cool when it comes to Apple usage, it's very practical. So that was cool of them to do that. But nonetheless, when you're comparing the two phones, the camera upgrades, they're really good. Um, the main sensor, it's 65% bigger. And we all numbers, no numbers are just numbers until you test them in the real world. So once I get mine, I'm gonna test it and compare it. But there's already videos out there. So you guys probably already have an idea that the differences between the last year's model and this year's model is minimal. The low light is significantly or marginally better. Not marginally, I don't know. The videos that I've seen low light has been way better in the 14 models. So kudos to the iPhone 14 Pro Max and Pro for doing better in low light when it comes to the main shooting, main camera samples, and even the front facing camera, because they have an F.1.9 aperture, which allows more light in and autofocus. So you can really focus on the faces and groups and selfies, which is very nice and long overdue. So let's talk about storage options, because I know that's always the biggest question, even for me, what storage options should I get when it comes to which iPhone that I want to get? Let's talk about that. So if you're going to get 120 gigabytes of storage, this is basically for the user who is not going to have a lot of apps. They're not going to take all the pictures and videos. And if you have the pro models, you're definitely not going to shoot in raw and pro raw the entire time. So if you are not going to use your phone for everything and anything, and you're just going to like text, call, browse the internet, check emails, take a few photos and videos here and there and call it a day. 120 is just right for you to save that money. If you take a decent amount of photos and videos and you want to use some raw and pro res videos 
I said Pro Raw earlier, Pro Res videos, then 256 could be decent. I would just recommend with the raw photos that you edit them maybe on your phone in Lightroom or something like that, or Photoshop Express, and then export it into a JPEG so that way it kind of compresses the file down so that way you don't have that full raw 48 megapixel file because that is like 80 megabytes, I think. So the raw 48 megapixel photos are going to take up some storage, so be prepared for that. And also, when it comes to storage, if you do plan on shooting ProRes in 4K, if you have a 128 gigabyte model, you actually are only limited to 1080p 30 frames per second for ProRes. So keep that in mind. 120 gigabyte models are only limited to 1080p uh, 30 frames per second for ProRes. But anything higher than that, you can get 4K 60 and all that fun stuff. So keep that in mind if you care about ProRes. And I even, yeah, ProRes because you can't do 4K 60 in ProRes. And that's something I'm actually kind of upset about because I saw on the website, I was looking forward to ProRes being in 4K 60 so I can slow it down when I'm editing, but it's still stuck at 4K 30. So with the A16 Bionic chip being so powerful, it still can't shoot ProRes in 4K 60, let alone this camera is actually capable of 8K video and they won't even give us that option. Now granted, Apple probably doesn't think 8K is very useful or practical at this point since there's no 8K uh, monitors out there there's some 8k tvs but most of the consumers don't own 8k displays at this time so that's probably why they're not putting 8k 8k on the cameras i was expecting it but i guess it's not useful let alone 8k files literally take up a lot of storage so one th i can't imagine 120 gigabyte storage even having that option if it was a thing so that kind of sucks but it'd be nice if apple just gave us more options like other manufacturers do right so 256 if you're gonna shoot some raw pro res have some decent amount of apps and all that stuff you should be okay 512 512 now if you download apple loss list some title tracks or spotify tracks you can get away with this on 256 but you will be pushing it on the storage if you're downloading a lot of stuff like that if you're downloading dolby vision videos and movies 512 is definitely the one for you because dolby vision videos and movies they take out some storage maybe like three gigabytes five gigabytes from my experience of downloading movies on my phone so yeah, 512 is actually the sweet spot if you want to download and have everything local, all your music local, some movies local, some local big files if you're editing on your phone and want to keep everything local like that, 512 is the, the definite sweet spot. Now one terabyte, nobody should really get this unless you make a living off your phone being your workhorse. Like you edit on your phone, you do Photoshop, Lightroom, you do, uh, not Final Cut, but iMovie or Adobe Express, I think of what is, yeah, I think it's Premiere Express or Premiere Pro Express, whatever that Premiere app is for editing video. I forgot the name of it, I used to use it a lot, but yeah, that app, like if, oh, LumaFusion. You can use LumaFusion on the iPhone too, and that's like the most powerful thing right now, and it's very useful on the iPad. So if you're gonna do all that and just keep all these files on your phone, all this ProRes, all this RAW, all these movies and music at the highest quality of lossless audio, then one terabyte might be the one for you. But if you're not gonna do that, definitely 256 is the sweet spot, and that's why most of it's out of stock in most areas, and you're gonna have to wait a long time for it. So there's that. Um, so I'm probably getting over a little five minutes. Sorry about that. Kind of ranted a little bit. But yeah, the iPhone 14 models, I don't recommend them just if you have an iPhone 13 or even a 12 Pro Max because it's eh, not that great, spec wise at least. But nonetheless, if you have the 13 models, the 14 will be like a minimal upgrade marginal. It has a cool design when it comes to the Pro's models and you want better low light photography and video. And if you really care about cinematic mode being in 4K, then there's that. But the action mode, that's at 2K, 2.8K, 30 frames per second, I think. And the stabilization on the phone is already great enough where you probably don't need it unless you're mountain biking. I think I talked this about this before in my last video where it kind of is trying to compete with GoPro, I think, with the action mode. So that's, I wouldn't say gimmicky, it could be useful, but it's not really, uh, average consumer in need if you know what i mean so all right that's all i got for this buyer's guide it was kind of short and sweet kind of to the point um so i hope this helped you 
with your guide and trying to pick which iPhone is right for you or if you should even upgrade. So let me know in the comments below what you thought and what you're gonna get. And don't forget to hit the like the button, subscribe, hit that bell icon, stay tuned for more. I'm out. Gonna make another video here soon about the Apple Watch. And if you should upgrade based on what we know. And based on the reviews that are already all out, out for the Series 8 and soon the Ultra. So I'm getting that in October. So we'll have to stay tuned for that video as well. Thanks for watching. Peace. Goodbye. Good night.